How's it going? Hope everyone's having a great day. All right, it's been a long time coming. I've been so busy, but uh, I figured while I wait for these to stone wash and set up, I, I got them soaking in penetrating oil. I wasn't going to keep them uh, like a high satin finish, and the last second I was like, ah, let's stone wash them, and then two turn them. So I figured I had a little bit of time to do this tips and questions and whatever, uh, you know, whatever you guys suggest, all that good stuff. I actually got a really good topic for today. But first, I'll put my website up in the cards. It's down the first link. I got Amazon links, all that stuff. I got shirts on there. Hopefully soon I'll have knives. I got six knives to get logos on. That's my next video, which right after I turn this off, I'm going to start shooting because, uh, whew, yeah, man. <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Leave your tips and your questions for the next one. I've got a few already, but uh, hopefully once all this gets uh, calmed down, I can uh, get to more of these Q&As. All right, so let's just get started. I think I'm gonna title this, What You Need for Greatness, or I keep looking this way because I got notes up here. Yeah, what Yeah, what you need for greatness. Uh, now this is gonna be a little unorthodox, and uh, to be honest, it hurts. <laughs> So a lot of people aren't going to want to go this route, but it's the best way to get better at probably anything. But I apply it to knife making because that's what I learned. So anyway, when I started making knives, my friend that got me into knives, he didn't really make knives, except when I got more equipment, he'd try to make them. But he always bought knives and had a whole bunch of, uh, he knew a lot about knives, put it that way. When I started making knives, you know, you go on all these knife forums and, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all that, and it doesn't matter how bad your knife looks, people are always going to tell you that knife looks good. You know why? Because they want you to tell them how good their knife looks to you. So, uh, if you're ever looking for advice on how you're improving or how your knife looks, don't go to, you know, don't go to forums and don't go to anything where there's other knife makers because they're going to tell you it looks good no matter how bad it looks that's kind of the point and uh my friend he was brutally honest you know he's like my best friend but i would i would think i was making progress he's like yeah but man you are just messing up here and here okay you've improved this a little bit but uh this still looks like shit, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and it hurts, it hurts a lot, man. It, you know, it crushes your ego and you don't wanna make knives anymore and you wanna give up. But that's what you need. You need to find someone honest, someone that's gonna tell you what your, what your progress, what your work looks like and how good it is and how bad it is. Especially the how bad it is part. It, 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 you know, it'll make you want to give up and it'll make you want to quit. And if you do quit and you give up, move on to something else, but find someone that's going to be honest with that. You know, some people don't have enough passion for something to keep going, to make it through the hard times and the rough times. And I've had people ask me to critique their knives and uh, I don't do it. Mainly for the fact is, I've tried it a few times, and people are, and I always tell them, look, I'm gonna be brutally honest, it's gonna hurt. And they're like, I can take it, just tell me, or I'll tell them I don't do it because of that. And then the first, and they'll tread the waters just a little bit, just touching the water and be like, well, this is wrong. And then they start giving me a bunch of excuses. I was like, sorry, I can't help you anymore. And that's why I don't do it, because it hurts. And, uh, People don't want to hear that. People want me to tell them how good their knife looks. As much as they say they can take it and oh man, it's no problem. I want you to critique my knife. Right when I start, the first thing I get is, well, this is why. Well, this is what happened, this, this, and that. Oh, I was planning on doing this. And believe me, that's why you need a friend or someone that's gonna be honest with you because they'll, they'll put up with your bullshit. And they'll be like, okay, whatever. And then they'll keep telling you how bad it is. You know, a good friend is someone that can tell you 
things you don't want to hear and you'll still uh, be friends with them. And they know you. That's the other thing. Someone has to know you. I don't know you. You know, you comment or we talk back and forth. So we become friends maybe or, you know, people are associates. You know, I do it with like Alex Steele and all these bigger YouTubers, you know, Simple Little Life. I talk to them all the time or I used to. And uh, that doesn't mean we're friends or that they could, they would help me or anything like that. You know, it's, it's a weird dichotomy, the online uh, presence. Because you talk to these people enough where you think, oh, I know them, but you don't know them at all. You know about 10 minutes of their life. So find someone that's going to be honest with you. Not online. Someone that's personally will be like, look, I'm going to tell you the truth, but after we go that, we'll move on to something else. Yeah, it's all about your passion. And, you know, you go cry and you'll throw the knife down and, and you wipe your tears and then you got to get back to work. <laughs> now, the other thing about that is, and this one took me a while to do, you got to learn to separate opinion from fact. Like my friend would tell me, oh, you know, once I start getting better and better, he'd be like, well, I don't like this on the knife. Well, I don't care if you don't like it, does it look good, you know? Because everyone's got a different taste than what they like in knives. A lot of my knives he doesn't like because of the shape or because of this or whatever I do to this and that, you know, which is fine. But, you know, some of the shapes I don't like that I make, he thinks are the best shapes out there. So it's like, okay, that's opinion. That's the other part. Make sure you can separate the opinion that they're giving you from, okay, well, your grinds kind of suck. You need to get better at grinding or, or your plunge lines are horrible. You know, you need to fix that. Your handles aren't, aren't matching up. You need to fix that. Or you got a gap here between the handle and the blade. But when it gets to opinion, just take their opinion and, uh, you know, <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> I mean, you're making your knives. You got to like them. That's basically it. If other people like them too, then hey, that's a bonus. The daily rant is over. Or the, the weekly. Now it's going bi-weekly, maybe every three weeks. <laughs> so Jay actually has two questions. Oh, so Jay says, how do you get both sides equal? You have someone that rides your ass and tells you you're messing up. That's how. <laughs> no. Man, time and practice. Time, practice, time, practice until you're happy. If you think there's something wrong with your knife, there's something wrong with your knife. You know? Don't just blow it off and be like, oh, man, because I, I am real guilty of this or used to be real guilty of it until I got put in line. It's like, oh, that's okay. People won't notice. And honestly, most People that are in the knives won't notice, or that buy knives won't notice, but those knife enthusiasts that are like, no knives, they will notice right off the bat. As a first, as a, in fact, your knife can be perfect, but they'll, they'll notice every flaw. Even the flaws you don't notice. <laughs> and then Jay asked, you know, why is everything worth something so hard to, I, I'll paraphrase this, you know, why is everything cool? So much money or so much work or whatever? Well, there's a simple solution to that, a simple answer. Because if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. And that's that's bottom line. Anything that anything that is worth it in life, you're gonna have to work for. If it's easy, then you might as well not even have it. If it's cheap, why buy it? You know? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty logical you know if it's something you want you have to work for it I mean that it's bottom line and it sucks and we all think that oh man I wish I could have I wish I could have you know I wish I could be a millionaire but then you know what you know what millionaires do they work for more money so it's like you know look at Elon Musk look at the you know Jeff uh, the dude from Amazon you know these dudes are billionaires but what do they do they work harder than anyone else so, you know, that's the secret of life, I guess. <laughs> you know, they enjoy what they do and they keep working at it. So Blades for Day had a question and then he kind of followed it up with 
what he uses, but he was asking about ceramic belts. And, you know, that's the thing about knife making. Knife making is expensive. You know, that's why the knives that are custom knives cost so much. You know, it's, you know, people have to put a lot of money into it to get some money out of it. And, uh, yeah, you know, you maybe get, if you're grinding bevels, you might get uh, two knives out of it, out of a ceramic belt. Let me start again. What you got to do is start with a lower belt, like a, a 50 or a 40 or a 36. Start with that and get your bevels almost to where they're at and get it all shaped to where you're at and then put those belts to the side. That's why you see me always saving belts because that bevel belt that was a, a 40 or a 50 or a 36 is now a shaping belt for your next knife. So by the time you get to 120, you really shouldn't have to do much grinding. 120, when you start at 120, it's all finish work. It's where your finish starts. <laughs> your finish work starts at 120. And then you go up from there. You know, that's why I do everything off the belts. Now, am I obsessed with grinding uh, perfect bevels? Yes. You know, do I spend a lot of money on belts to make sure I don't have to hand sand? Yes. Do I spend three or four times as much time grinding bevels so I don't need to hand sand? Yes. I could probably stop hand sand for a half an hour instead of spending an hour and a half, you know, getting my bevels looking good. That's my little obsession, and I love grind lines, and I love the way a grind at knife looks. It's all in how you do it, how you want to do it. He says he uses zirconium. You know, if that works for you, that's great. I tried zirconium, and I just didn't see. You know, you can get like VSM belts for like, uh, what, six, seven bucks? And I think zirconium is like four or five bucks. So. It's, it's all in what you want to spend, but the ceramic gives you that little bit better. I didn't like zirconium, so ceramics is what I stick with. You know, you just got to buy a lot of them. You know, when you start buying bulk, sometimes you get discounts. Find the ceramics that's the cheapest. And, uh, yeah, VSM works good, all that. You know, if you want to go to zirconia and start, save a couple bucks, is it worth it to me? No. To someone else? They might have a different opinion. That's, that's the hardest part of knife making, is finding what works for you and not listening to everyone else. Because, I, I man, that's a, it's a trap you fall into. You find these guys, and sometimes they're sponsored, so they're saying things. They're getting their belts free, so it doesn't matter what they say, you know, and then you follow them. That just means those belts are going to cost more because they're, you know, the person that's making the belts are spending more money to pay people to use them. Anyway, I digress. It's a, you know, you gotta find your little things and test things out and see what works best for you. That, that's the best advice I can give you. So if you watched my last Kydex video, I was talking about, a guy said he uses five layers. Here's his name, I can't pronounce the name, I know I'll butcher it. I did try the five layers, but check this out. I mean, I tried four instead of three, but look. That's why, I mean, it's not gonna hurt the knife or nothing's wrong with it. And it fits perfect, it still has that snap, but the more layers you put on, the looser it is in the sheath. So do four layers, do five layers if you like. You know, that's, it goes back to this. You have to find what works for you. I like three, cause I don't get that much play in the sheath. Is the blade going to scratch like that? No, because it's all going up and down. You know, it's the back and forth when you don't clean out the kydex and you get stuff in the sheath. That's where it scratches it going in and out. But will it drive my OCD crazy? Yes. <laughs> so I'm going back to three layers. <clears throat> but for some people, three layers is too much or too tight. Leave your tips like this because I'll try them out because I do need to learn things just like anyone else. So, uh... You know, I tried it, it didn't work for me as well, or it works, it works great, but that little bit of play will drive me crazy. Even though it won't do anything, any harm to the knife, you know, these are the little, little things uh, that OCD drives you crazy with. So, <laughs> so this next question is from George. 
And uh, I don't really know. I mean, I kind of know what he's talking about, but he, he asked about when hormones fade. And uh, I'll be honest. Actually, look, here's the three, uh, three layers of tape. See, no play at all. But uh, this knife is probably, uh, what, three years old? Two or three years old. Uh, you know, now scratches, there's nothing you can do about it. Your knife is going to get scratched up from use. And fade away, <clears throat> I mean, these both these knives are a couple years old. Now, this one I've never used. But this one I carried every day, you know? I used to carry them like this. And, uh, you know, you put some, like, ADCI on it, you know, some corrosion stuff, and you'll have problems. This one's never been out of the house. I just brought it out because I keep it right next to my bed. <laughs> I don't think I even put EDCI on it, but like I said, this one's never even been used or out of the house, so. If you buy someone else's knife and it has a hormone on it, I'd maybe contact them and send it back. I mean, your knife's gonna get scratched up. I don't see the the hormone fading, I guess it depends on how they bring the hormone out. The hormone is part of the steel. The hormone comes because some of the knife is soft and some of the knife is hard. And that's the line in between where the clay is. So I don't, the hormone won't fade. The only thing I would say is contact the person, maybe ask them how they finish their hormone and, and do that, you know, or Learn knife making, uh, you know, experiment. If it's not an expensive knife, experiment and sand it down and dip it in ferric and <laughs> see what happens. Or just uh, watch one of my many hormone videos. <laughs> a good segue to put my playlist up here. <laughs> and try experiment with yourself. All right, so Ethan asked what stock I use. Now, most everything I use is 3 sixteenths. Now, if I'm doing like a kitchen knife, I'll go to like 0.15. Actually, I take that back. Cause these folders are 0.1572. Man, they got a nice snap to them cause they're lighter. Someone that bought, just posted on Facebook, he just bought one of my knives and he's like, man, this thing's a beast. You know, it's like a tank. And cause I usually use 0 0.187, 3 sixteenths. Isn't there one together here? Oh, my froggy knife. <laughs> There's a homo for you. But yeah, this is 157. And it, listen to that snap. <laughs> the blade's just a lot lighter. You wouldn't think that little bit of uh, thickness makes a difference. But so it, it really depends on what you're doing. You know, some of my, the Japanese knives that I made that I didn't know what I was doing, those were, I think, eighth inch. It really, like I, like, I go back to it. It's what you like in knives. You know, some people, like, look at Gavco knives. All his knives are really thin. But there's some badass knives, you know? He's one of my favorite makers. Maybe get, you know, that's the thing. All these uh, knife supply stores usually now sell, uh, you know, one foot pieces, 12 inch pieces. So get some and see what you like best. <laughs> Here's a great question. So John asked how I keep my feet from getting metal shavings in them. You know, the, the part that uh, when I'm over by my mill and those little pieces come off, that's usually where it is. But, you know, the thing is, uh, I don't know if you've ever lived at the beach or stayed at the beach for a long time, but uh, your feet get tough, you know. I don't, I, the only time I wear shoes, I actually started playing drums. I started wearing shoes for like the first session and then I go barefoot. And when I go to the store and stuff, I wear shoes, of course, but uh, my feet are tough. But every once in a while I step on stuff and, and it sticks. Then you just gotta pull it out. It's actually the pieces, like when I, I'm cutting G10 or something, little pieces, the little corner pieces, those hurt. You know, it's not what sticks in your foot, it's the pieces that don't stick that really hurt. <laughs> It started out because I was too lazy, and then it just became a thing I always don't wear shoes, you know? And also, another time, 
I was wearing shoes and a hot piece flew right into my shoe and burned my foot. And it's like, well, I'm not wearing shoes anymore. It's like, damn it, something's telling me not to wear shoes. I, get, I don't get hurt when I don't wear shoes and then when I wear them, I get hurt. <laughs> so Bobby asked about interrupted quenches. I think I've done a couple videos where I did an interrupted quench. I've done it with W2. I don't know. I think W2 is the only one I did it with, but I didn't really see that much of a difference. You know, um, it wasn't, I don't know. I, I, you know, Parks 50 is fast enough with W2 where it's good. And I even did an old video. Maybe I'll put the video up here. It's bad. The video is hard to watch. You know, it's my old stuff when I was learning how to make videos. You think knife making is hard? Try learning how to make videos when you've never even owned a camera before. <laughs> and you want everyone to listen to your music. <laughs> it's bad. I've gotten a little bit better. But anyway, yeah. So I even made something where I, I was looking it up how to make water and oil mix. And dish soap. So I made my own, like, Parts 50, where it was like, uh, a part oil and a part water and put some dish soap in it and it made it like a really thin oil and that actually worked um, almost as good as the parts itself with W2 but yeah I didn't find I did the interrupted crunches but I just didn't see any significant uh, improvement you know like the tipping scale do you get more use out of it or does it make things worse? And then there's that middle part, and it's like, which side do you fall on? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Do you get more out of it? Do you not get more, you know? So that's that's where like everything seems to sit, you know, and it's all personal preference. <laughs> so uh, my blades have been sitting long enough. I'm gonna get back to the grinder, hopefully edit this tomorrow morning, and it should be up Sunday, today's Saturday. We'll see, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit it tonight. We'll see how much I get done. All right, thanks for watching. Remember, my website's up in the card. The first down in the description. Uh, yeah, I got Amazon links for all the tools I use. Every time I do one of these Q&As, I have to sit here and drink and I lose my voice. <laughs> I can feel it going. <laughs> all right. Make sure to leave more comments and your questions, all that stuff, tips. I try them out. You know, if I see a tip that I've never tried, I'll, I'll try it. I need your help. <laughs> anyway, yeah, questions, tips, all that good stuff. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, let's see, I'll put the rest of the Q&As right here, and my website's right there. Hope you all have a great day, and as always, Take it easy. I had to pause because I'm going uh, to cut my voice. <laughs> Woof.